Good morning. What a just awesome conversation that's taking place here today. Um, so I am going to take us a little international just for fun. And I'm going to try to make this portion of uh, the discussion a little playful and um, throw out a few ideas. Uh, Jonathan has asked us to also take a look at um, some solutions. And so let me take a moment. I'm not going to get into the detail of how these destinations have dealt with over tourism. Um, I work for Abercrombie and Kent, a luxury travel company. We have offices in 44 countries. We, you know, take guests to, you know, over 100 countries around the world, including Angkor Wat here in Cambodia. And one of the things that we need to manage because of this issue of over-visitation is that this is sometimes the scene. Um, this is a very popular spot. There's actually a pond in front of this beautiful temple that you can't see where the morning light reflects and it's a, just a spectacular image. But um, it is not any fun to try to capture um, when you're in a, the throngs like that. Uh, Machu Picchu, let's go to Latin America and the image of, of spending time and having a, a personalized experience with the guide um, is very different than what many people will experience. This happens to be at the Sun Gate going in. These are all folks that have trekked two, three, four nights in order to reach, um, but they're not allowed until a certain time of day uh, when the sun is up to be able to finish that last half a mile entrance into um, the actual site itself. Um, Croatia, wandering the beautiful stone lined streets and buildings, um, but it's very, very different. And especially in this instance, when there's cruise ships um, of course, Venice is a popular reference, um, and that is not what most people experienced. Um, it's going to change. Each one of these destinations has gone through some sort of pause, some type of reflection about how do we sustain the quality of the guest experience. Um, they have all been through those crisis moments when the feedback, when the um, communication from guests was just so horrific from the stakeholders, from the industry, actors, the players was, we have to figure this out. And they made changes. So in Machu Picchu, there's now a ticketing system. You get a morning or an, an afternoon pass to be able to enter. Venice is going to get rid of uh, a lot of the cruise ship arrivals. Um, the Taj Mahal in India is, is you know, going through its own management um, in terms of the numbers, uh, the days that locals have access and what the pricing proposition is going to be. And that's one of the influencers um, the tickets, the entrance fees, uh, the visitor uh, um, management tools at play. Iceland, who would have thought Iceland has an issue with over tourism? Um, but it happened to them. They had so many folks, whoops, go back, so many folks arrived because of the popularity. And a lot of that popularity was influenced by social media and other actors in the sort of communication channels. Um, and so you needed to have that photo, that selfie in that iconic location, that cliff, or uh, that waterfall and it really made for a mess um, in a lot of these destinations. Of course, Greece is another popular reference and, and, and we all know how beautiful it is and how beautiful those seas are, except when you're standing in a crowd like this all taking selfies. Um, Great Wall of China and Yellowstone. Yes, indeed, it can happen here too, as we know, and as we heard this morning. Um, so let me, let me escape, I'm gonna, Ariana, I'm going to stop doing the screen sharing at this point. Um, and I'm going to just call up a few bullet points. If we didn't think it could happen here, the one that comes to mind, and, every, and I'm going to talk about stories. I'm going to give it a New York accent. We're going to talk about stories. We're going to be a little bit playful for the next um, few moments. Jonathan asked us to keep it to 12 minutes um, with, the, with a, few, a few inputs of uh, solutions. Um, the story that comes to mind for me um, in Jackson was out at Schwabacher's uh, for a beautiful fall morning. Um, and you can imagine, right? So I thought I was doing well in getting out there, ooh, probably four o'clock. Um, but of course, the real hardcore photographers had arrived at uh, you know, 2.30, 2 2.45, 2 3 o'clock. There were already 50 people lined up to capture uh, the iconic shots of the water and the mountains. And then all the folks who didn't know they had to wake up so early coming in. And, um, you know, we can talk a lot about ideas of, um, 
you know, what, what travel does to, to us and the value of it and in terms of St. Augustine believing that, you know, if you don't travel, you're only reading one page of a book, etc. cetera. Um, but the idea that travel tends to magnify all human emotions, I tell you what, being out at Schwabacher's uh, for sunrise at uh, on a beautiful fall foliage morning, I, I didn't know that F-bombs were a whole category of human emotion. Um, they definitely seem to uh, come forth. Uh, and it was pretty rough. It was pretty raw. Um, and I guess in the context of our conversation today, um, crisis times are opportunities for innovation. And every one of those destinations that I just showed globally um, has dealt with a uh, crisis of overtourism. And so, you know, the Goldilocks question, how much is too much? Um, I guess I'm going to suggest that it, we should open our ears and be really closely paying attention to some of the stories that we hear. And I know there's been a lot of reference, and I appreciate uh, you know, Brian and Anna speaking to the TTB's mission. Um, what are those stories that we are likely to hear this summer? Uh, the older couple who didn't get to see Hidden Falls because the line for a boat across Jenny Lake was too long. That same couple, only she's in a wheelchair. They still can't make it across. The family who waited in line for two hours with tired and hungry kids to get dinner at Bubba's. The family who couldn't go rafting. Uh, because dad didn't know he had to book the trip, you know, weeks or months in advance. And they're completely sold out during the time that they're in, they're in uh, our, our, our home, our, in our Jackson. A local family with young kids looking out the window, driving by yet another moose killed on the Moose Wilson Road. Um, not the bison jams, not the bear jams per se. Uh, these are the stories. And every destination wants to talk about the authenticity and present those authentic stories. And if you're in the field, you know, the, the usual reaction to authentic as a term is, you know, gag me. But it is really important what people are going to walk away with. So to the question, the Goldilocks question, how much is too much when the stories change? When our guests talk about their experience and our destination, and it becomes war story after war story. Um, and I'm really not intending to be too much of a downer on this, um, but I want to highlight as, as Anna and, and Brian have and others, um, the destination storytelling is the most powerful marketing tool of a DMO. Abercrombie and Kent, we work very closely with DMOs all over the world. And when told correctly, we can sync our messaging to our guests uh, with the stories that the DMO is aspiring to have told. And in fact, we can be amplifiers for that. Um, you know, the stories can Tell, create an emotional connection between the place and its target market. Ideally, online marketing tools sew the two together and create an experience that people remember and share with their networks. That's the goal. I'm, I'm a little concerned. Stay tuned. Um, you know what this online messaging is going to be from Jackson this summer, um, given the prospect for some of these stories that we're not going to be as proud about. Um, and so here's a, here's a challenge. At some point, I suspect this summer, Everyone on this line listening in is going to have a moment where there's pause about what you're seeing, what you're witnessing, what you're experiencing. And um, you may begin to start to tell a different story when you gather for dinner that night. So solutions. We're supposed to throw out a few solutions in the context of the conversation. Um, the work of DMOs to tell their story has lots of different layers. I'm going to use the term DMO in assumption, bold assumption here that, um, in fact, we're going to get away from the Travel Tourism Board and we're going to move to a destination marketing and hopefully management um, emphasis and that that's going to recraft the, uh, the expenditure that we're going to have available to us. Um, collaboration with other DMOs. Um, I'm going to suggest that there's lots of lessons that can be learned and I think we're going to hear internationally what some of those might be and we've had some chat discussion on what others are. Uh, let me throw out two fun examples. Um, in uh, Iceland, one of the issues about the over-tourism that they experienced is that culturally people would go to enjoy the hot springs, only they weren't practicing the same hygienic standards that uh, Icelandic folks were accustomed to in these small communities. Every one of them has hot water and have these beautiful uh, baths to be able to go into. And so they came up with this awesome marketing campaign that was directed at the arrivals, the new visitors, but um, was really addressing a local's concern. And it was uh, a teacher, and I don't have an example of it because I wasn't sure we we're going to be able to Play video, but it was a teacher in a very stern manner instructing the student, okay, try it again. And 
they were practicing a song. Head and shoulders and crotch and toes. <laughs> there, you need to shower before you get in their hot springs. They were getting really upset. The Faroe Islands, they took a fun, fun marketing initiative and they announced the Faroe Islands are closed. No more. Unless you want to come volunteer and help us clean up and prepare for the tourism season. And that, that crazy, crazy idea um, yielded an, an incredibly attentive audience of folks who actually cared. And I do think that part of this conversation relative to over-tourism ties into 2021 and the impact of COVID in 2020 and that there's a lot of discussion about travel being much more transformational, much more of a, uh, a journey, an internal spiritual journey, journey for people. Um, they wanna feel good in the destination they're going. They wanna contribute more. Um, we have certainly experienced that at Abercrombie and Kent in the context of selling our tours, um, that we get a lot more requests for the connectivity back to local communities, um, especially in the developing regions. Um, I'm going to suggest that there be a greater outreach to tour operators. Um, there are more tour operators selling Jackson Hole at this time than ever before. Uh, many that sold Africa, Asia, Asia, Latin America have had to rejig, and so they're selling the Western states. Um, these travel these tour operators, these travel agencies, they have, there are hundreds of them. There are thousands of travel agents, travel consultants, and they can help us to amplify whatever messages as a destination, as this newly constituted EMO, we may choose to, uh, to wanna advocate. Let me, let me close with one playful um, and we'll build off of the pharaohs. Imagine, um, we know our concerns about our destination. We heard from federal management agencies, some of the constraints they're gonna face, a, a horrible uh, fear for the staffing um, as, as expressed, um, but what if, what if as a destination, April, it's a low month and one of our goals is to attract travelers, but what if we went after a particular type of traveler? And we said, as hoteliers, I happen to own a small boutique property here in, in the Valley, in addition to working for a &K, what if we as hoteliers organized with the chamber and said, we will give 50% discount Anybody who stays during the month of April, provided that for every night you give a half a day of volunteer service, and then we turn to our, our federal management aid, aid entities and say, hey, we've got 100 people lined up. Where can you use 50 in the morning, 50 at night? And we, cha we, we channel the desire, this, this sort of proposition of transformation in the, in the new context into improving uh, the guest, future guest experience for the coming season. Um, it's also a playful way to address our profile. Um, again, worried about the stories that are going to be told that, um, that they may not be the best at the end of the year uh, coming forward. Um, you know, no place is ever as bad as they tell you it's going to be. We all love Jackson. This conversation is, you know, has not been organized to diss our beloved home, but rather to safeguard what we love and want others to love as well. We just, you know, not to death. Um, thank you. Hopefully that lends some international perspective to what will now be regional and then, uh, and then quite local. Thanks.